Hi, today I'm gonna update you guys on what happened in week five. So we drove down to Riverside to interview two attorneys at the Institute for Justice, and we talked about code enforcement, which is a pretty new concept to me. Uh, say if you own a house and then you have a broken window or your lawn is not tidy, um, you have unpermitted construction, the city government would usually cite you and then make you pay some fee. However, in places like Indio in California, when the code enforcement officers find out that you have a broken window or any other kind of unpermitted constructions, they don't usually just cite you and uh, make you fix them. They will turn to another private firm uh, to handle this case and for criminal prosecution. One of the victims was cited for $225 because one of her tenants was raising chickens in the backyard of her home in violation of the city regulation. And then the city hired a private firm to handle the code enforcement and billed her for thousands of dollars for the cost of her own prosecution. She ended up paying more than $6,000. Typically, the property owners would plead guilty and are ordered to pay a small fine. But then months later, they will receive another bill uh, demanding them to pay for the cost of her own prosecution from a private firm. They can appeal, but that would bring even more bills to them. They would then be charged for the cost of fighting that appeal. To me, this sounds really unbelievable because obviously we don't have that in Hong Kong. The government usually don't hire private firms to handle legal matters like this. And this is just a small piece of cake. Like if they have a broken window, like they didn't affect anybody, right? And even if they did, they pay the cost. That should be the end of the story. But, but here, the city government is trying to make more revenues and earn more money by hiring a private firm to handle uh, code enforcement, which to me sounds really surprising. To me, I don't think that any code enforcement or any other legal problem should be profit-oriented because it would only make the government and the law firms to prosecute more people in order to get money. Apart from that interview, I've been editing the interview with um, Paul Share that we did last week. I've been editing a lot of B-rolls and trying to fine-tune the speed um, of that interview. In the weekend, I also visited San Francisco and the Bay Area for the very first time because uh, I have some friends there and then I, I just uh, stayed with them. And then they took me to different places and we hung out. It was pretty fun. But it was really foggy in San Francisco, um, especially in the Golden Gate Bridge. I went there for a photo shoot, but then it was so foggy that you can't even see the bridge. It's just pure blank, like a white mist. And you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. It was so cold. It, it felt like winter. It reminded me of the day when I was in Boston. It was really cold. So I was in really bad luck. But then I was really happy to meet my friends. So basically, this is what happened in week five. I will update you guys next week uh, after my last day in recent. I'll see you guys.